So the question is, are you ready? Yes. What I wanted to hear. Welcome back to the Collective Clips. The real question is, are you ready? Are you ready? To hear another true and factual, actual story, something that happened, something that I was privy to be right there on the yard when it happened, and to see pretty much the whole thing unfold, man. And it was, it was a horrible thing. You know, most of the time, you know, when you're doing time with the brothers, the blacks, right? Um, I like to call them the brothers, man. I, I just, I've never liked that word, the blacks, right? I, I, I think, you know, I don't see them as black, man. I see them as brown, but that, that's just me. That's a whole different story for a whole different spill, right? But um, doing time with the brothers, you know, you start to notice their get down and how they interact and the different cliques. It's very cliquish, right? The way they get down and the groups and different organizations and different ways that they present themselves and they act while on the yard. Um, there's a big stigma here on YouTube. You know, when people talk about the brothers in prison, you know, a lot of people like to hate or a lot of people like to... Uh, uh, not really talk about what they're all about and like to minimize, you know, how hard they are or, or the work that they put in. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that they're the hardest people in the world. And, you know, that's not, I'm, I'm not no dick rider, homie. That ain't going to happen, right? But one thing I will say in this actual factual, man, is I've met a lot of brothers over the years that were about that business. They were with every bit of them activities, right? Um, but you start to see it for what it is. You know, I've never given a proper run down according to what I've seen, my, my perspective, my opinion on the brothers while incarcerated, you know, but this is a story about a youngster, um, who got backdoored, who got tricked. The trickery was real tricky games, you know, tricky dance moves was happening. Um, they definitely utilized this guy to their benefit and, um, did some horrible things to him. Now I'm just being honest, right? Like a filthy rich song. So trip out, um, you know, you got the Crips, <clears throat> And when you have the Crips, man, you have the L.A. Crips. They're the more dominant group from what I noticed, from my perspective, because maybe they have the numbers. They have the tradition. You know, that's where it started. That's where the California Revolution in progress started. That's where Crips took form. That's where Tookie and his camarada, his partner, ran. They decided to start that group down there, allegedly. Right. Um, and it took it took, uh, you know, it was like wildfire. Once it started, it, it blew up. You know, and they had the right reasoning behind it. They were trying to protect their neighborhoods. They were trying to protect their people. You know, and I understand that every group, every organization, every clique starts off with good reasoning behind it. With the, There's a good proper mindset. There's set goals. There's a reason that everything is being done. And it's to basically protect your people, to help your people. You know the world we live in, ain't they? Let's not Let's not sugarcoat nothing. Let's not sit here and act like the world we don't live in, there aren't special privileges for some. And let's not act like the world we live in, everybody doesn't get the shitty end of the stick. Everybody is on equal footing. Everybody gets bad times, everyone has good times. That's just the way it is. I hate when people say, well, the white boys, they're born with the silver spoon. Not all of them. I have a couple homeboys, man, that had more roaches than any Mexican in the hood. I met a couple white boys, man, the Stampia game was real. Their food stamp game was just as immaculate as mine. You know, I've met a lot of people from a lot of different places that had a lot of the same disadvantages. So I don't want to hear that shit when people are saying, well, these people got it better than these people. No, I understand there's some bias. There's a lot of racial tension. It's always going to be like that. I'm sorry, Spence la tira. I don't mean to break your heart, but it's not going to change. Anyways, um, but we can try and that's all we can do. So anyways, you know, the LA Crips are, are pretty deep on the yards and they're the more dominant group, not dominant by fists and not dominant by having more hands or mentality. They're just the larger of the group. They have the sheer numbers, you know, and then of course you have the NCs, which are the Northern Crips, the Crips from Stockton, Merced, Modesto, Sacramento, and any, any other city on the in-between from the Central, Central Valley on back. Um, and they're scarce in numbers, but they hold it down. You know, anyone who's ever met anyone from 44 G's from townhomes out of Stockton or Merced Gangster Crips or Sacramento Garden Block Crips, you already know what time it is, man. You know, these guys are with the business. Their cripping might be a little bit different from LA, but at the end of the day, man, correct, it's real. Now, when it comes to the sangres, the bloods, pa rules, damus, whatever you want to call them, 
Um, they come from all walks of life when it comes to California. I've noticed that the ones from LA, the ones from the Valle over down south, and of course the Central Valley, they all stick together. They stick together for numbers, power, man, and because they got a common understanding and a set goal of what they're trying to get accomplished. You know, I got a lot of love for the Bloods and Power Rules, and I'm going to tell you this right now. On Power Rule, WAC 100, you definitely don't speak for all them gentlemen. Them guys are hard as rocks, man. They're down to put it down. Well, then you got another group. You got another group called the Kumis, the 415s. And for anyone who doesn't know the extensive history of the Kumis, they're kind of an offshoot of the Black Gorilla family. They're someone or, or a group, you know, that was started, splintered off of the Black Gorilla family and came into their own. Now, when I say 415, that is, of course, the area code for the East Bay area. It was, always will be, always shall be. I know you got the 510, the 707. You got all these different, all of the, you know, North Bay, South Bay. You got all the Bay, and they have different area codes. But all of them identify when they're incarcerated under one, which is the 415, which is Kumi, is what it means in Swahili. Um, and the Kumi cats are with the business, man. They got a different swag, a different flavor. The Bay, when has the Bay area not had that swag and flavor? They're innovators of this shit, man. If they start a dance, people fucking follow. If they lead, people hear them. You know, the Bay Area rap scene, the Bay Area style, the Bay Area, the motion out there by the ocean, the way the fools get it. Yay, area. The Kumis are definitely, definitely a group to be reckoned with. A lot of them are young, more flamboyant. They like to get their this face on. And they're in prison acting like they act on the streets. They're acting like it's a goddamn sideshow. That's just the way it is. Um... But they're a dangerous group when they come together because they got so many hitters from different areas like Vallejo, Richmond, Berkeley, Hayward, you know, the uh, the whole East Bay, man. You got shit, San Francisco, the city, town business, Oakland, you know, uh, San Leandro. It could just get worse and worse and worse if you go down that wrong street. But incarcerated, a lot of these groups, <clears throat> even though they function on the same side of the yard, the brothers, man, they're all fragmented off into different pieces. Whereas you have the LA Crips that stick together. Some of the NCs fuck with them, but some of them don't. Then, of course, you have the Pyrus and the Bloods that really kick it hard with the Kumis. And, and it's just, there is really no tension. I mean, if someone comes that has personal beef, they're going to get off where they're mad at. But for the most part, the brothers are going to stick together because they understand that the opposition have numbers. The opposition are willing to put in that work and go to the fullest. And them damn Mexicans like to use knives, right? And so... At the end of the day, man, the brothers must come together, you know, for a common purpose and a common goal, and that's to survive. That's prison for you. I hate to cut it and dice it and flip it any other way, but to be honest with you and totally real, man, that's the way prison has always been. It's been one ethnicity versus another. You know, gangs, throw the gangs out the window, man, because if it really comes push to shove, it can get very, very racial, man. And then the woods are like, brother, we're going with the essays. And that's just how it is. Um... But I functioned for a lot of years on the same side of the yard with the brothers. And I got I was privy to hearing their conversations, the way they act, the way they, they wiggle, man. And, and for the most part, like I said, it was none of my business to be involved in their business. My people said, stand back, stay alert. You know, don't apply no pressure to involve yourself with what they got going on because they'll turn on you quick because you ain't one of them just like they ain't one of you. It's just the way it is. We're all human. We're all men. We all treat each other with respect. You have to respect everyone. Everyone is worthy of it. But at the same time, man, there's a lot of the ways that they were doing that we weren't doing and vice versa. You know, like I said, everyone has their flaws and everyone has their good points. Um, <clears throat> so a kid gets there. Okay, a kid gets to the three yard where I was at. And uh, he was from the Bay Area. You know, so he automatically clicked in and fell in with the 415s, the Kumis. Now, on this particular yard, there was a couple cats at a seminary, Oakland, that were really running that yard as far as for the Kumis. Um, and there was a cat out of Vallejo that was a heavy, heavy, heavy hitter. Um, he was from the Crest side, and he was with them activities in that business. And I remember he had a, a, a very vicious reputation for taking your shit, right? But he didn't take other racist shit. So that's not the way it works out. He wasn't going over there pressing up on the woods, brother. They weren't going to have that. They're going to defend their people no matter what. You are not allowed to touch a skinhead. You are not allowed. Well, the woods, you know what I mean? If you want to do that, then they're going to act funky. They're going to get real funky town on it. But I know as far as the skins there... Um, no one is allowed to touch a skinhead, man. That's just the way they rock. Oi, they're going to handle their business. Um, so he wasn't pressing up on them. He was deboing his own people. He was deboing youngsters that would come in. He was taking their shoes. He was taking their commissary. And believe, don't act like these brothers didn't fight back. Because I'm here to tell you, they definitely fucking were fucking trying to fight them. Um, you know what I mean? But Tupac, Tupac. 
There was only so much you can do. This Volta was doing the Damon, and that was it. And they were doing the 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 oh my god, right? The white girl status shit, cause uh they couldn't they couldn't fight back what what you couldn't beat. You know, it was David and Goliath, and Goliath, I don't care if you hit him with the rock in the head, that brother was big. He was gonna win. Um, so he was pushing up and pressuring people. Well, he was in the fold within the Kumis, man. And and these guys at the time, I remember there was a lot of tension going on with the Norteños and the Kumis at that particular time. It was going down in high desert. Uh, I think it was B-Yard. What had happened was a Kumi had got out of Northerner in a disrespectful manner um, in a library or somewhere. Um, and the Northerner took flight on him. And after that, you know, it was all out guerra. It was all out war for a minute. For a minute. I know my brother was on the yard out there. Um, so I was hearing that, you know, the Kumis and, and the Norteños were getting down. And that fucking breaks the mystique of what people say, that blacks and Norteños stick together, that whites and Southsiders stick together. It's not the way it is, man. Everyone sticks with their own people. It could be funk with anyone at any time. It could be funk within your own car, man. And most of the time, a lot of the fucking bullshit that's going on is funk within your own car. Everybody's hating on everyone and everyone's trying to get ahead and everyone's chasing that fucking bag on the yard. Plain and simple, period. Um... You know what I mean? No, no, no added preservatives. So now what you had was this one guy that was deboing everyone and people were feeling some type of way. You know, they didn't really care for that, man. Uh, but they weren't going to say it because they'll beat him up. They'll slap him right in their fucking mascara and knock their caspa off their head, right? He just wasn't, he was the type of dude that you left alone and you hoped and prayed, man, that he didn't look at you. Now, of course, being on the northern side of things, man, he wouldn't approach us in that manner just out of respect for the gente. But you always knew, man, that if you bumped into this guy, man, you better put some metal in him because he was a big boy. That author was like the black Conan the Barbarian. He was over there fucking swinging shit. You know, he was with it. Um, and he carried a piece. You know, he was always secured at all times. He made sure that people on that yard seen that he was secured um, and that he definitely uh, uh, would apply that pressure. Now, this youngster comes on the yard, man, and this youngster... He's a young kid, like I said, man. You could tell he just wants to get in where he fits in. He's trying extra. He's doing the most, man. He's going above and beyond and extra to fit in. So what had happened was at this time, the Bloods were having um, some type of discrepancy or some type of conflict with the Kumis because I guess a Kumi had got a package. He owed the sangre. He owed the blood, man. He was trying to bullshit him like, I ain't got it yet. But they seen him take it back to his cell. On the Everyone could see. When you get your package, this is the way it goes down, man. Let me give you the rundown of the California prison system for those of you that don't know that ain't been there. Those of you that have, you can identify. You take your fucking bag out there, your laundry bag, which is a stretching material in most places. You take it, flip it up over your shoulder, man. You hit that linea, right? You hit that line. There's usually a pole right there and there's a list of names. And it's going to tell you everybody who's getting cantina. I mean, everybody who's getting a package. If your family looked out, if your baby mama, man, she met Leroy. Leroy's put her some money on your books. Boom. Hey, just keep keeping Leroy warm, right? Everything's going to be good in the hood. You get your fucking commissary or your canteen. The canteen yard's right there. Sometimes you get a little ice cream, a little soda. Everybody's happy on the yard. You look out for the homies. You know what I mean? You know what? It, one time for the one time. And then you get on back to your building, take your commissary in there, and every homeboy's asking for a soap on the way there. You know what I mean? So, hey, by the time you get there, you got half a sack. That's just how it is. Um, so everyone's seen this, this guy, uh, this... Uh, Guy fucking take his canteen back. So they were pressing him, right? They were pressing him for their what he owed, the issue. Of course, he ain't trying to pay. Um, and there was a, a couple fights that broke out. Shut the yard down. Put the yard down, man. It was just uh, fist fights because the brothers will do that. The brothers will fist fight. You know, you're not going to see Mexicans fist fighting on the yard. You're not going to see whites doing too much of that, man. It's all metal play. It's all weaponry. It's no hands-on policies, man. If you're that mad to get off in front of people and embarrass your gente, you better put some metal on someone and make it work for you. You better make it twerk for you. So that's how it is. But the brothers have different philosophies and different reglas, different fucking program, different politics, man, whereas they can't put uh, fingertips on you, you know? Um, and that's just what it is. You see a lot of the fights that go down are between brothers. So anyways, they had their little skirmishes, little melees, a um, couple three-on-threes, whatever. So there was tension on the yard between them two groups. So this kid was put on frontline status. Now, for those of you that don't know what frontline status means, it means that, man, somewhere along the line, your assistance is needed. You know, sometimes, man, we would put people on frontline status that had fucked up. You know, you get caught with a bundle or, uh, you know, simple infractions, things that, you know, uh, 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 it's not really a, a fact to remove you from the yard. You're not a threat to the yard. You ain't a weirdo. Um, you just have a little infraction. I know the Southerners like to do a, a, a regulation or whatever they do. 
but the Norteños man would put you on frontline status or you have to write a whole bunch of essays and do a whole lot of burpees, oh my, right? There's just different rule infractions and there's consequences for every action. And a lot of things, a lot of the things were meant to build you up, to tear down the old flaws, ways of thinking and to build you back up, man, in that real spirit of a soldado. Um, so I understood the situations like writing essays and things like that, man. Not only did it stimulate your mind, you always, you recognize too, man, I don't want to fuck up again because I was getting, that was a 5,000 word essay, shit, right? Um, and that's just it. And it's always a topic that's going to uh, uh, justify the reasoning behind why you fucked up and why you shouldn't have. You know, it's always something that that's that's relevant to the situation. So anyways, uh, they didn't play like that. These brothers, man, they put this dude on frontline status, meaning that they were going to use him as a torpedo to hit people. And this guy um, was supposed to hit somebody with the piece. Um, he was supposed to hit somebody with the piece that had disrespect. I guess he was going to hit that guy that was burning people, right? Um and what happened was he didn't. He did it, man. He he came out to the yard and he started pleading for mercy. I was right there by the bars, uh, listening to him justify why he couldn't. He had a visit coming after visiting. It was on like Dinky and Donkey Kong. He was gonna get his Luigi on and man and hop over toadstool, right? He was gonna handle his business, but he kept procrastinating. You know, visit came and went, still nothing happened. The brothers were starting to get hot. Now, let me let me let me break the stigma again, man, for the elephant in the room. The guys that think that the brothers will constantly put metal in you and do all that, they're not, they're not trying to do all that, man. A lot of these brothers got it going on. They got badass Latina chicks coming to visit them with big old BBLs. And they're not trying to fuck off their visits. They're never trying to see the yard go down. They're trying to get their commissary canteen on. Bullshit with their old lady jack off right there in the day room while they're on the phone and do all kinds of other shit, right? So they're not going to push too much upon us, someone. But when someone's got to go on a three or four yard, someone has got to go. And that's just how it is. Guard! You know it. Don't lie. So anyways, these uh, individuals are plotting and planning. So what they did was they wanted to get rid of this kid. But instead of losing more soldiers and instead of putting someone on this kid. Um, and like I said, man, it got to the point where they started going up in his cell, man. I seen a couple black guys. Yeah, it just wasn't right. The things that they were doing to this kid wasn't right. I can't even speak on some of the things that they did do to this kid. <gasps> Tupac, Tupac. But I will say that um, he wasn't the same when he came to the yard. He was a little bit more shallow and quiet. And... Uh, he looked like he was victimized, if you understand my drift, right? Um, you know, got to look out for each other, brother. And he just, it just was definitely different. But anyways, so what happened was this cat was supposed to do this movida or they were going to move on him. I guess they had put their foot down like, hey, this was going to happen. And at this time, it was going to be on that big bottle. They wanted to get rid of that big bottle that was deboing everyone, punking everyone, right? The dude from Vallejo. You, he had to go, homie. He had to go because he was just doing too much. And what had happened was he had got into it with one of the Southerners. There was no disrespect, but I guess he was just kind of mean mugging. And you could already tell that the Southsiders on the other side of the yard were starting to look very, very hard our way. Meaning we're on the same side of the yard with the black, but we, we were named Bennett. The North Daniels weren't up in it, right? Um, but they definitely were looking. So they were bidding their time. And one thing about the Sureños on the yard, the Southsiders, is when they come, they come. They come in waves, right? And they don't stop. They don't stop, man. They, they apply serious pressure, right? I mean, the brothers knew that. And most of the brothers, man, I'm going to be honest with you, they ain't scared of no one, man. But they ain't trying to do all that, like I said, especially with the Mexicans, because the Mexicans carry knives, right? And they're like, fuck that. Um, you know, so if you can avoid conflict in prison because of what's going on in the yard, why not? Men will be men and carry themselves with professionalism and respect others. Um, but when someone's got to go, they definitely got to go. So anyways, uh, the South Siders are looking. Anyways, so this is what happens. Um, this youngster was supposed to handle business, right? He was supposed to go up in this cell and handle this dude. You know, he was supposed to do like the movie Shot Caller, man. It was going to be his first real one. He was going to go in there. He was supposed to take this guy off the mat. This guy wasn't supposed to come back out that cell. They gave him a big bone crusher, told him to handle his business. He was going to go at Chow, on the Chow line. When they released for Chow, man, he was a couple cells down. He was supposed to run to that dude's cell and get to book. And why they didn't send someone else in there with them? Well, there was a reason for that. This is what happened. Okay, this guy decided, the big guy, this was all a plan. Okay, this was all a plan. The brothers was going to get off on the South Siders the next day anyways. That was their plan. They figured, fuck it, man, we're short in numbers. We're going to get off, right? We ain't tripping. But this youngster, man, th they needed to get him, right? Because once they went to the oil, guess what was going to happen? He was People were going to be shot to different yards. You know, things were going to happen. So instead of using him as a torpedo to handle business, they said, we're going to get rid of him tonight. So they made him think that he was going to get rid of the bigger dude. But in all reality, the bigger dude was going to 
Jody, oh Jody. You know what I mean? The hoofs. He was gonna get rid of him. Uh, after he did his business, right? So this youngster man is willing to do this shit. So when he runs in there, what had happened was the celly to this guy that was in on it, he took off to chow, right? So when this youngster goes in there, get over here. The big dude snatched him, was waiting on him, took his shit and said, shut the fuck up, right? When that fucking, when his celly came back from chow, he went into the other cell, two cells down with the dude celly, with the youngster celly, man. And he shut the fuck up because he already knew what time it was, man. <clears throat> I digress. But needless to say, Let's just say that youngster, um, it was all bad, man. You know what I mean? I threw juice everywhere, right? Um, and the big dude had the time of his life. Because time won't give me time. He was getting his boy George on in a real way. Culture club shit. And the other dude was just, I throw, right? He was fucking struggling. Um, he 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 he, uh, he unlived him. Is that that's how they call it? Um but death by bungee. You know what I mean? If you know what bungee is, right? Um, all night long. It was like they were dancing on the ceiling like a Lionel Richie song in there. Um, and it happened, you know? He got backdoored by the Kumis, man. He got backdoored by the 415s because that's how ruthless that group is. Now, of course, I'm not going to sit here and say that they condoned what that dude did. That dude took that upon himself uh, to do them extracurricular activities. But they definitely, Holmes, definitely did um, play a part in it. And the setup was real, man. And that poor youngster... You know, he got gurneyed up out of there. I remember it was like, wow, seen that one coming. Um, really seen that one coming. And that was it. Anyways, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed that story. It's true, man. Like I said, not all brothers rock like that, man. But that's what happened in this particular situation. It was a very ugly situation. But it's all facts, homes. With that being said, I hope that you move smooth with a purpose. Get everything that you want coming to you. Remember, right here on the Collective Clips, like, subscribe. Fuck with your boy, man. Hit that notification bell. Put it to all so that way you can hear all these real bangers that I'm putting out daily. If you haven't tapped in with Gunners Collective, go over there, man. I had to go in on the cat today. You know what I mean? We call them, uh, uh, they call them Johnny Propane, Johnny Rockets. Uh, Johnny Smoke Detectors, all kinds of other things. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Go peep it out. The gun. Bang, bang.